hello everyone and welcome to blograna everything and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a match review as we take a look at barcelona's slender one nil victory away at alaves as they played in their second straight match in basque territory and finally they returned to winning ways now coming into this match both alaves and barca had failed to register a win in any of their last three games on the bounce and while that means uh, a close outcome probably could have been expected in fact i was at some point thinking this would just end as a goalless draw but barca actually enjoyed some large spells where they dominated position but the problem is they barely created anything with it however late on barcelona managed to string together a good passage of play as jordi alba and ferran torres linked up to set up frankie de jong for what turned out to be the match winner the win now sees barca move up to fifth place after real sociedad recorded a goalless draw against Tafe to drop out of the top four so like we do in match reviews i'll take you through the tactical setup for both teams then get into the team performances before talking negatives and positives and finally picking my man of the match but before we move on any further just a quick plug here guys please feel free to hit like and subscribe at any point when you're watching this video so you can keep up with all the fc barcelona content on this channel okay Let's go ahead and talk tactical setup. Deportivo set up in a 4-5-1 with the following players. In goal, Pacheco, the back four of Martin, La Guardia, Lejuen and Lopez. The midfield five of Jason, Escalante, Pina, Pons and Rioja. And Jose Lu was the lone man up front. Barcelona, on the other hand, set up in a 4-3-3, more or less like we had expected, just maybe one or two tweaks here and there. In goal, Macandre to stake in as usual, the back four of Serginio Dest, Ronald Araujo, Gerard Piquet and Jordi Alba, the midfield three of Pedri, Busquets and Frankie de Jong, and a front three of Ferran Torres, Luke de Jong and Abde. Let's go ahead now and quickly talk about the team performance. Now. This is probably going to be one of the shortest summaries I will give for the team performance on the day. The stats will show that Barcelona dominated the possession, but the stats will also show that Barcelona only managed a few shots on target, not that many more than Deportivo Alaves did, because for most of this match, Barcelona were just making sideways passes and there was very much a lack of penetration and there was just a slowness and the generally lethargic play from Barcelona in the final third. Defensively, they were a bit more sharper than usual. I thought that on this day, they did a pretty good job most of the time when defending counter-attacks. But then again, the quality of players who were breaking at Barcelona on those counter-attacks isn't exactly the best. But yeah, at the end of the day, very drab performance by Barcelona. But one good moment with Alba Torres and Frankie de Jong linking up, giving Barcelona that big win and I guess you just take the win, right? What other option do you have? Let's move on and talk about the negatives from this game and I will start first of all by talking about something I've already alluded to, the poor ball circulation. Now for large spells in this game I kept on wondering why Barcelona were very static, not only with, with their ball movement but also the movement of players you'd have passages of play where maybe down the left wing you have Jordi Alba you have Ferran Torres and you have Pedri and they'll just hold on to the ball a bit too long for my liking I thought and that crossfield ball was taking a bit too long to be played you know what you want to do is have the ball on one wing and the moment you see one guy is free on the other side you play to him directly and you know that way you're moving the opposition around Barcelona were not moving Deportivo around at all and Deportivo were very comfortable and I thought Barcelona mistakenly decided to play through the middle which always played into the hands of Deportivo Alaves because like you can see from the team lineup I showed you earlier they packed the middle of that pitch so the spaces were out wide and Barca didn't take advantage of that. The next negative I have was poor decision making. I thought that tonight our players were very poor at making decisions when they were on the ball. And that's almost throughout the entire squad. There were some moments where you'd see Frankie de Jong play the ball backwards when he could have played it forwards and maybe put the Deportivo Alaves defense 
on the back foot because they were pushing up. Other times, maybe it would be Jordi Alba dawdling on the ball instead of just clearing it or instead of just playing it forward. And, you know, it was a lot of it going around. There were very few players today who I thought made the right decisions when they were on the ball. I mean, perhaps maybe Pedri and Gerard Piquet. I can't think of anybody else today who I would say always made the right decision. So it was a poor, poor performance on that front from Barcelona. And I also have to say that the setup from Xavi Hernandez wasn't exactly the best or rather not the setup but how Barcelona were playing considering their setup if you have Luke De Jong in there you have to give him crosses to head right that's where all his three goals more or less have come from have come from crosses him getting on the end of crosses but we're not doing any of that and as a result we suffered for it anyway enough negatives I will move on and talk positives and the only positive that I can I can think of here is that this is a win that gets the job done. We got the dub. A dub is a dub, you know. A win is a win. This is one instance where I will tolerate the phrase, it is what it is, like Ronald Koeman put it not so long ago. It was a win that Barcelona needed from this match, considering how everybody else around them won, apart from Tosiedad. And it was a win that Barcelona got. How they got it is very, very worrying. I should put it that way, the performance on the day is not good. But they did get the win, and that win puts them up into fifth, and they stay just one point behind fourth place Atletico de Madrid, who they just so happen to be playing next. So I don't know how we'll beat Atleti then, but hopefully this international break will give us some new ideas in the forward areas. Finally, I will get into the man of the match, and for this game, I thought probably there was only one person to consider, and it just so happened to be our match winner on the day. Frankie de Jong, I thought that he did a lot of things well today. Let's put it that way. He didn't do everything well, but he did a lot of things well. And what he did when he scored that goal, that's exactly what Barcelona are asking of him to be doing. And for that, I think he deserves to get the Man of the Match award for this game. Don't really have that much more to add on top of that. But um, yeah, Frankie de Jong, Man of the Match. That's all she wrote for this one, ladies and gentlemen. An undeserved win at the end of the day, I think, but you know, a win nonetheless, like I said earlier, and a win that moves us up to fifth, and it's good because Barcelona actually took advantage of Sociedad's slip-up against Itafi. Now, if only Atletico Madrid didn't manage to come back against Valencia, we would actually be in fourth. Well, we are now going into the international break, and coincidentally, this match was actually the last one of January. So my next upload will be the usual player of the month upload. So please make sure to tune in so you do not miss that. But anywho, what were your thoughts on the game? Who was your man of the match? Tell me in the comments section. Thank you once again for tuning in. Do have a great day and for Sabasa.